Welcome back. This is part two of my lab for After Effects Basics, a visual effects focused lab. Now, part two, we're going to look at how to use content aware fill. Now, if you didn't join me from the previous session, my name is Ian Robinson. So hello. I'm going to jump into PowerPoint here really quickly to share my contact info if you have any questions or want to give me a follow. So there it is. Now that that's over and done with, I'm going to go ahead and jump into what we're going to cover in this part of our lab. We're going to use content aware fill for video to define key areas of our video footage that need to be removed. Then we're going to look at different fill options so you get a basic understanding of what each fill option does. Then we'll learn how to help guide the fill using Photoshop for reference frames. Because on occasion, After Effects Content Aware Fill may or may not work quite exactly how you're planning. So just taking it into Photoshop and painting a reference frame sometimes really helps. Then we'll talk about what kinds of footage or scenarios work well with Content Aware Fill for video. So as you can see, we have a couple things to jump into right now. But uh, before we launch After Effects, I just want to remind you, this course was designed for you to watch the video first and download the exercise files and the workbook. So you can watch it again to actually try and follow along, or you can use the workbook and utilize the same steps that I've done here. Okay. Let's hop out of the exciting PowerPoint and jump right into After Effects. I'm actually going to navigate to my exercise files, which I save to my desktop. In that folder, I have my 01 projects folder, and I want to open the 02 content aware fill project. So once that's open, I want to take a hot second to look at the interface. First thing, the screen needs to be maximized. So I'll come to the upper right here and maximize that. And second thing, I've got some panels open that I don't necessarily want open. So I'm going to come up here to the word standard and I'll double click on that and choose yes from the dialog box to reset the workspace. Now in the project panel, you'll see I have two compositions that I've created. So I want you to go ahead and double click on the 01 calf cable removal composition. Calf meaning content aware fill, okay? In here, I've got a video clip from a music video that my friend Nick Haraz produced. Now, as I scrub through here, you'll see I've got this shot with the singer being reflected in a mirror, which is kind of a cool artsy thing to do, but it's sometimes challenging because the mirror is very old, so the footage is a little wavy. And as I scrub through here in the timeline, you'll notice on the left-hand side of the wall here, I've got what I personally think is a little bit of a distracting uh, string of lights that aren't even lit. So we're going to go ahead and use Content Aware Fill to remove this. The challenge being the fact that it is a reflection and the camera is moving. And as you can see, there is a zoom out in the scene and the camera tilts up and down uh, quite a bit. So there are some motions that we need to track as well. So I'm going to start to move my current time indicator to where the cable is most clear which is about frame 4 seconds and 22 frames. Right here, I'll select layer 1. That way, I can go up to my tool panel and grab the pen tool. So with the pen tool selected, I want to draw a mask around the outside of this um, cable. Notice I'm running the beta version of After Effects, so when I have a layer selected with the pen tool, I get an icon showing me that I will be creating a layer mask. If you don't see this icon, make sure you're running either the beta or the latest version of the software. Um, and uh, yeah, that should get what you need. Or you could potentially not have layer one selected. And then when I hover, notice there's a star icon, which means it's going to make a shape layer, which 
I don't want to do. So I'll make sure layer one is selected here, and then I'll go ahead and draw a loose box around the cable. So I'm just coming down here, and I don't want to go too far over because here is his shadow in the wall, and I don't want to mess with that too much. So I want to stay relatively close to the cable, but not go too far. So here we go, I'll come back out here, and I'll click right up here and close the mask, okay? Now, just so I can more clearly see what's going on, I'm going to press MM in rapid succession. M as in mask, okay, MM. And that will open up the mask path and its options. So with the mask path open here, I want to go and click on the drop down where it says add and change that to none for the time being. And uh, I want to go ahead and track this. So I'll select mask one and I'll make note of what frame I'm on, 422. And I'll right click or control click on the words mask one and click on track mask. Over here in the tracker, I'll click on the method, and I want to make sure there's position, scale, and rotation, but I don't need anything else. Now, I can track in two different directions here, and just so I have a little more space in my timeline, I'm going to click on the word tracker and drag that panel up here on the right-hand side of the composition panel like so. Okay. So now I'll track to the right first. So I'll click this inner right arrow and that's gonna go ahead and do a rigid mass track uh, in the direction to the right. So notice it's locked on beautifully as that zoom out occurs. So once it reaches the end of the timeline, it's gonna go ahead and stop the tracking process. So it should be shortly here after this tilt. And there we go. So you can see all the keyframes that have been created. I'm gonna move my current time indicator back to the left of all these keyframes, and then I'll press the K key to move to the right in the timeline. K will move to the right, uh, the current time indicator, to whatever keyframe is currently visible. So since I had it to the left when I pressed K, it moved to the right. If I wanted to move the opposite direction, I could press J, and since I don't have any keyframes to the left, it just went to the beginning of the timeline. But here I'll go ahead and press K to move to that first keyframe that we had done at 422. Now let's track the opposite direction. I'll go ahead and make sure I'm in the tracker, not the preview panel. And I'll go ahead and click this left inner track arrow. And again, I'll just kind of hang out here as it's tracking. And I want to make sure that the track is locked on to the cable. So as it moves, I want to make sure the cable doesn't ever go outside of the mask. Because if it does, that little extra information that's outside of the mask can sometimes mess with the fill information. Now, once that track is done and I scrub, you can see actually what's going on here. Everything is locked down, which is perfect. But in order to use Content Aware Fill, I need to have a hole to fill. So before I enable this mask, I'm gonna go here under mask feather because I want the edges of this fill to be a little soft. So I'll go ahead and set that to a setting of about three for the feathering. And then I'll click on mask one and click on the drop down and set it to subtract. So now there's a hole in that mask. Notice when I hover over the composition panel, I still have the pen tool active. So I'm gonna press V as in victory to grab my selection tool. Okay, now we're actually ready to do content aware fill. So what I'll do is make sure layer one is selected and then I'll go up under the window panel and under window, I'll go to content aware fill. And that's gonna open this panel here. So. I'll drag this panel directly on top of the tracker panel like so. And I can navigate back and forth between the tracker and content aware fill if I want, but I'll leave this at the front. So notice it's giving me a preview of the hole that's been cut. So this area here is what's going to be filled. Now, just to make sure there is an overlap, I'm going to increase the alpha expansion by about a setting of two. So it's just gonna fill it out two extra pixels, okay? 
Now, when you're working with Content Aware Fill, uh, there are a couple different ways you can work. I want to click in the range, and instead of tracking the entire duration, I want to make sure it's set to the work area. So I'll move my current time indicator to about two seconds in the timeline, and I'll press N as in Nancy to set the end of the work area. Now I can go ahead and generate a fill layer. So when I click on this, it's going to go ahead and generate the fill. And I only wanted to do the first two seconds because I want to make sure the fill actually looks pretty good before I tell it to do the entire thing. So since I had a transparent area, it went ahead and filled it in. And I can go ahead and just click in the bottom empty area here, and you can see the fill looks pretty darn good. If I move my playhead back to the beginning and press the space bar here, you can see it looks pretty good, but uh, you can see it's a little darker in the area that's filled versus these highlights. And I think I'm the only person in the world that would notice that. I could paint a reference frame for this, but I'll show you reference frames in the next example. So this looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and press the space bar to stop playback, and I'll move my current time indicator back to frame zero, and I'll hover over the work area end right here in the top of my timeline, and I'll drag that all the way out like so. Now, I don't need this fill information. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select layer two, and I'll say generate fill layer. And when I do that, it's going to actually generate a fill over top of the previous one. So it's still gonna start at frame zero and then go over absolutely everything. But as you can see on this computer, it's actually uh, doing a very quick analysis. It's going to do things in two steps. It's going to analyze the hole, and then it's going to actually create the frames to fill the hole that correspond to that. Then it's going to import those frames back as an image sequence and place them at the top of my timeline. Now you might be wondering where it's actually saving those frames. Well, you can specify that by clicking on the little three-line menu here in the upper right section of the tab. Right here, I can go to my Content Aware Fill Settings, and this is where I could specify the path. So I could have it render frames to an absolute folder where I specify and it goes to a single folder all the time, or something relative to the project. Just something to note. If you're working on a network drive, sometimes saving the project on the network drive causes a little bit of an issue with how Content Aware actually is rendering the frames. So uh, a lot of times I like making sure that my project is saved on um, a drive that is directly connected to my system and not necessarily going through a network uh, to work with that. So if you ever have an error, check that out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, click outside of that. Oh, also, you can have a higher bit depth if your project has more colors. Uh, I know those of you that are new to After Effects, you might be going, what's bit depth? Uh, more advanced video editors probably know, people who do color correction probably know, but basically uh, more colors, more information. Uh, it's a bigger file system, but it also creates uh, beautiful imagery with higher dynamic range. Um, so it can work up to uh, 32 bit. So that's great. I leave mine set at project depth and never really change it. So I'll go ahead and click cancel. Okay, so now that I've got my fill generated here, I'll click in the bottom of the timeline to deselect, and I'll just press the space bar to preview so we can check out exactly what we've done. And as it's going through, you can see it's done a pretty masterful job of actually removing that individual line. Now, I'll press the space bar to stop playback one more time because I want to draw your attention to the fill method. Now, I chose object because nine times out of 10, object is what I'm working with. Uh, I'm trying to remove an object out of the scene. Now, since that string of lights was really close to the edge of that wall, like it was hanging right on the wall, I could have chosen surface as an option. Uh, and what that does is just analyzes everything around and um, it doesn't try and figure as much uh, removal of an object. It considers 
the area around the outside of it um, as more of like a flat surface. So it tries to integrate with it that way. Uh, what I tell most people is uh, try objects, you know, using the work area. If it looks good, you don't have to change it, um, but you can change surface and have it generate a new fill and that works as well. So uh, edge blend is another option where had I not actually overfilled for that little area there, um, or I was actually filling from um, an element that had very stark edges, uh, I could do an edge blend um, with the fill to actually fill in a little extra data. And that would be layered on top, just like you saw the other layers here. But let's look at the next example because I wanna show you how to create reference frames, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and double click in the project panel on the 02 CAF person removal. Now, this is footage of my friend Francis on his fancy one wheel skateboard kind of thing. Um, and well, I'll just go ahead and press the space bar so you can check it out. You can see it's drone footage of him uh, going along this bridge. Now, when I initially saw this, I was concerned because the bridge, as you can tell, has a very distinct pattern with the boards. And I thought that might be problematic for content aware fill. The other thing that you wanna be aware of when you're filling uh, certain areas, you wanna make sure that the area that you're filling is basically one plane. So notice here when he gets close to the railing, um, there'll be a section where we'll actually have to fill in a little bit in the railing area. And sometimes that can cause issues uh, because we have one plane going this way and another plane going that way. Um, but as you see, as you'll see soon, uh, this will work out just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the space bar to stop playback. I'll move my playhead back to frame zero and I'll grab my trusty old pen tool and notice I have the star icon next to the pen. So I'm gonna click on layer one and I'll move over like this. If you're not seeing these icons, make sure to update to the latest version of the software or uh, if it's not out yet, go ahead and install the beta, the public beta, which is available on the Creative Cloud desktop application. All right, so here, I'm gonna go ahead and click, 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 click. I'm giving a fair amount of space on the bottom and the left because believe it or not, there's a little bit of a shadow on the skateboard. So here, I wanna move some of these points out here just a little bit uh, to make sure that I don't have the edge of that shadow being clipped by the mask that I'm creating. All right, so uh, let's select layer one and press M to open up mask one and change the blend mode or change the mode of the mask to none so we can see the mask. Come on, change it from add to none. There we go. And I'll click on the color next to mask one and I'll choose something nice and bright. This time I'll choose like a bright red and click okay. All right, now I can see the mask clearly. I'll right click on the words mask one and choose track mask. When I do that, you see the tracker up here. The options I wanna choose are just position, scale and rotation. I don't need anything other than that. So since I'm on frame zero, I'll use the inner tracker arrows to track to the right. And as this is moving, I'm making sure that I can stop this playback if I need to. And as you can see, see the edge of the mask kind of gets up right here at this one point when he skates kind of close to the railing. I wanna bring that in more tightly. So uh, what I'll do is grab my selection tool here from the tools panel, click outside the mask, and I just wanna click this one edge and bring it in like so. And in true editing fashion for the rigid mass tracker, I'm gonna zoom in on the timeline by pressing the plus button and I'll delete a couple of these keyframes here to the left, maybe like 20 of them, and I'll just press the backspace to delete. So now when I scrub here, uh, I deleted too many. Okay, Control Z or Command Z to undo. I'll just delete a couple of them like so and then I'll scrub and see. And if you're not seeing the mask, make sure it's selected. There we go. And the fact that it actually popped up over the edge a little bit here, um, it's not too bad, but you know what? I'll just go ahead and delete a couple 
of these frames like so. And so let me see what that does. Okay, this one here, I'm just gonna bring it in tight. There we go, okay. So yeah, it comes up on the edge there a little bit, but it's okay. And now here it's gonna be nice and close to his backpack. And I'll just keep going again, making sure I'm in the tracker. I'll click the rightmost arrow here. And I still have a little space from his backpack, so that's great. I'll stop here because it's getting kind of close and I'll just space this out like so. I'm gonna move this one out here like so. And I'll move my uh, magnification slider down so I can see my playhead and I'll just delete a couple of these frames, right, like so. And I'll scrub back to make sure it still looks good and it does. So now I can go ahead and click on mask one and continue tracking to the right. Now, I know it went way up on the fence here for this one part, but I don't wanna get bogged down too much on the rigid mass tracker for this specific section. So I'll wait until it gets all the way to the end and we'll just let it go like so. All right, so here we go. There's the footage. All right, let's see what it looks like for the first two seconds. Or actually, you know what, we'll do three seconds. So he gets close to the edge here and then comes out. So here I'll get to three seconds and I'll press N as in Nancy to fill that in. And uh, I can go up under window and go to content aware fill. So here it is. Uh, I'll leave the alpha expansion set at two. Uh, I am removing an object, so I'll leave that set and I wanna do it for the work area. So I'll generate a fill layer. It's gonna go ahead and, oh, it's saying there's no opaque frames. Okay, that's fine. If you ever get that error, don't panic. It means this mask was never turned to subtract. You need to actually have a hole in the footage to fill. So now that I've done that, I'll select layer one and I'll go back here and say generate fill layer. So it's gonna go ahead and analyze what's going on and create a fill layer. Now, Based on that individual analysis, when it fills things in, as you can see here at three seconds, if I click away, you can see that's pretty well hidden, okay? Now, I made the mistake of scrubbing before it was done processing, so some of the frames were empty. But notice here, this large section, completely empty. And if I come up to the beginning, I've got edges here. So what I need to do is actually create two reference frames. I'm gonna do uh, one here where I can see the edges and I'll do another one back here at the beginning. So at the beginning, I'll select layer two like so and I'll choose create reference frame. It looks grayed out, but that's fine. When I create the reference frame, it's automatically going to open Photoshop. Inside of Photoshop here, uh, under window, I am in the essentials workspace, okay? On the left-hand side here, I'm going to click and hold and grab the clone stamp tool. And I'll come over here and hold down the alt key on windows or the option key on the Mac to sample from this area. And I'll hover over the edge like so. And I'll click and drag down. And it's just gonna paint the pixels along that edge. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'll hold down Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, to click and sample from this area, but I won't start painting until I get to this area. And I'll click and drag down like so. So now I've covered up those edges. If I really wanted to be picky, I could uh, do this with colors. So here I'll Option click or Alt click and just paint in the colors there, okay? You have to be careful with repeating elements like this that are rather unique. So if you wanna be super um, tight about it, you can go ahead and option click and sample and then just like doink, just do one little one to cut that out. I can see another one there, but when things play back, it'll be fine. So now what I'll do is press uh, Control S to save or Command S to save, and I'll jump back into After Effects. And I'll click outside of the area, and you'll notice uh, I can't see my fix. 
I need to turn off the fill here. And you notice now I actually have my reference frame, which is here, but it's underneath my mask. So I'm gonna go ahead and position that above so I can more clearly see the proper reference. Now I'll select layer three and I'll tell it to generate a fill layer like so. So it's gonna go ahead and analyze this and then move on to generate the fill. Now I could repeat this exact same process with another um, reference frame in the timeline down at three seconds as well. But um, right now I'll just try it with this first one. So now it's generated the fill and move that to the top. So I'll just click off and here you can see it looks pretty darn good. I could have retouched that one area, but when you play it back in real time, it's gonna look great. And there we go. Notice when it actually got to the end, to the three seconds here, I still have that rough edge. So uh, I could stop here and create another reference frame. But as you can see, it does a pretty remarkable job of removing the individual person. Now, if you're so inclined, I encourage you to finish the process and do a fill for the rest of the motion of removing our skater out of the boards. Now, if you enjoyed this, uh, please make sure to uh, fill out your uh, survey and let them know uh, how you feel. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed this. Uh, and also, if you need to get a hold of me, uh, I'll make sure that uh, you can see my follow-up information. So here is my contact information. Please uh, let me know if you have any questions. I hope to see you in part three, where we work on the 3D camera tracker tool.